Okay, this is an update on the leaking dry well on the Triangle Tube Smart 40. And this, I think, might be part four, but it could just as well be part six or seven or eight. So I had a number of problems, and I don't I haven't been filming after every single one. It's too depressing. Now let me just give you an update from maybe the last time. On the last one, my material that I was using to seal the threads was still the Teflon tape. I had wrapped it a little bit like a rope. I, I was thinking of using the Loctite 55, but I didn't have any, so I just twisted up regular Teflon tape. Now, what I found was, as I was tightening it, I was getting some water coming up over the top of the tape. And I realized that I was going to have to start cranking down to potentially seal it. And I realized as I was doing that, that this might be a bad sign because the I, since I have a crack in the, in the uh, fitting, the idea of sealing the tape by increasing the pressure on the threads may not be the best choice. So what I did was I opted to go to go with another sealant. Now, in this case, I went with the Loctite. In this case, Primatex, but it's the red thread lock. The high strength, uh, essentially described as permanent. The idea is to go to a more permanent solution. Now, it's not completely permanent since it will come apart with heat. If you heat this to over 500 degrees C, it is possible to disassemble. And on the back of my mind, I wanted to keep open the possibility of disassembly of this fixture. I don't know if that's practical given the fact that I now have all sorts of glue on there, but anyway, in theory, I, I, I could have and toyed with the idea of just putting JB Weld directly into the threads, two-part epoxy. But I went with this red thread lock, um, and I did another thing that I tried. Uh, I let it sit for 24 hours, which is supposed to be the cure time, but what I noticed was at the top, where you can see the red, it was still wet, and it wasn't hardening. And I realized that Maybe down in my basement, where it's relatively cool, and possibly with a tank of water that's cold. Um, it's not really curing properly. And I remember that when I had used this uh, blue thread lock, okay, that when I had removed it, it was not hard at all. It was actually quite gooey. So then I came up with the idea of using a hairdryer to run heat onto that fitting under the idea that I needed that cured stronger or permanent. I ran that hairdryer for several hours and I gave that an extra day on the red. And um, then I went to turn the water pressure on and everything seemed fine, but I did notice around the um, two-part epoxy, the gray JV weld, at one particular spot, I noticed what I would call a bubble. A little bubble formed and popped, and then it seemed to be okay. But it gave me an uneasy feeling, so I began to think, what else can I do to try to strengthen this sidewall of the fitting. Well, I certainly cleaned it up and put more um, JB Well two-part epoxy over it, but then I realized, okay, maybe I, I want to try to give it a little bit more backing support. So I remembered that I had previously bought a pack of this. It's fiberglass tape, fiber weld, also a JB product. And the idea is to wrap it around it and even though this is, was not optimum for getting that fiberglass tape in there because of the dimension, I had to cut the two inch wide tape in half to a one inch wide strip. 
and then I wrapped it around there as best I could. And then uh, when I couldn't wrap it anymore, I packed it. I let it sit for an hour. Okay, now I've turned on the water. Everything seems okay. It's not leaking. Mm, you know, maybe it would leak and I wouldn't see it, but at this point, I'm not necessarily interested in seeing a small leak. Okay, uh, as far as I know, it's fine. I, I hooked back up the wet, what was the wet aquastat, it's now been drying out. And the system is now going back. It, the aquastat might have been damaged, but it now seems to be operating. But I'll have to check, obviously, if the temperature that it's set to is, is working according to the way that it used to work. Okay. I, I did have a problem with this uh, connection to the aquastat. I had disconnected this initially to, to when this was wet and shorting to stop the call for heat. But what I didn't do was I didn't tape over these connections. And one of these is at 24 volts. And while it was sitting inadvertently, it rested up against one of the water pipes. That caused a short circuit, which caused my 24 volt transformer to, to blow out. Fortunately, I was able to debug that using the manual for the heater, the boiler. I was able to get another transformer for $22. So in this case, I was in $22 or $23 on a new transformer due to my own mistake. I was in $12 for this fiberglass tape. I was in $8 for this red thread lock. I was in $15 for this sealant. This might have worked if I'd used a heat gun on it. It might have locked it up. Uh, now, by a series of about seven attempts over about nine days, I've got something which at least makes it to the next level, which is to say I've got water pressure applied, the aquastat's hooked up, the call for heat, it's actually been heating up the water, and it looks like it's the call for heat is now gone away. The, the domestic hot water is presumably heated, although I'll have to check upstairs to see if the temperature is okay. I might have to replace the aquastat if it got damaged. Okay, but with any luck, I'll get some more life out of this tank. This was only eight years old. This should have lasted 15 to 20 years, of course, which is why I put this much work into it. I didn't want to scrap it. I cracked those threads on the fitting by tightening it. I don't know how originally it was leaking. And um, now maybe I've recovered from this mistake. We'll see. Okay, thanks. Bye.